Hey everybody, welcome back. Today's focus is on hair care and some of my most repurchased items. Because I do subscription boxes like FabFitFun, I'm constantly having my shelves restocked with products from different brands. Because I wanna use those products up and not repurchase, some of this hair care is really hard for me classified as like most repurchased because I don't wanna be wasteful of the products that I already own. I think that it might just be best for me to walk you through my hair care routine, kind of my overall process and what products I use all the time, and hopefully this is just somewhat informative for you. So, I think that it's only fair that we start at the beginning of the process. And the first step in the process is shampoo and conditioner. This in my hand specifically is conditioner because I've already previously run out of the shampoo. But this is the Kristen S. Signature line from Target. These retail for $10 per bottle, which I know is definitely pricier than your typical drugstore shampoos and conditioners on the market. But this has such a good salon quality smell. It's sulfate free, but it still suds up, which is a huge hard thing to find in like the natural shampoo realm, at least in my opinion. And because I have really long thick hair it just did a really good job of cleaning my hair so I do think that this is gonna be next on my repurchase list which probably would make it rank in my most repurchased shampoo and conditioner because I'm not somebody that's super loyal to one certain brand now in the summertime I like these locks to get a little bit lighter but I also refuse to pay to go get them lightened so I do also like to use the John Frieda go blonder shampoo it is in no way good for you I'm sure it has so many chemicals but I don't know sometimes you just got to sacrifice to get these locks a little lighter I know I've mentioned this on my channel before, but somebody called me brunette recently and I was just distraught. Not that brunette is bad by any means. I've just been super blonde my whole life and it is just slowly turning darker and darker. I kind of have a weird scalp thing. I feel like my hair can get greasy really, really easily. But at the same time, my scalp is dry and flaky and I oftentimes have to use some sort of exfoliating shampoo to try to get the buildup, probably from all the products and stuff that I use, out of my head. In the winter time, it's especially dry. And now that it's spring and we're kind of moving out of that, I shouldn't have as big of an issue. But I have been using this Briogeo Scalp Revival Charcoal and Coconut Oil Micro Exfoliating Shampoo. This is the third one of these that I've repurchased and that's saying something because this stuff is really expensive. I think this tub is like $42, which is insane. But a lot of the alternative products smell super harsh and chemically. I'm thinking specifically of the Neutrogena one. It smells like the vet. And I don't know if every veterinary clinic smells the exact same, but I know that the bottle I had smelled a lot like my local vet. And so I just hated using it. I felt like it was really harsh. It was totally stripping everything out of my scalp in not the best of ways. Because this has a uh, minty kind of quality to it, it leaves your scalp really tingly and refreshed. This has just been my go-to thing. Now I don't use this every single time I shampoo. This is probably like a once a week to maybe once every other week kind of shampoo just so that it lasts me a really long time. So if you're somebody who has kind of that dry flaky scalp and nothing's been working for you and you don't want your hair to smell horrible, or use a bunch of harsh chemicals, this is the brand that you need to go for. So as soon as I get out of the shower, no matter if I'm showering at night or in the morning, I do apply some type of detangling or heat protectant spray. Now I've been trying to do a really good job of not blow drying my hair as often, just to keep it a little bit healthier, just to tame the flyaways. I've found that spraying these products on at night before I go to bed is help protecting my locks the next morning when I go to heat style it using a curling wand or a curling iron or some type of straightener. And so one that I have repurchased a million times is this Briogeo Rosarco Milk Reparative Leave-In conditioning spray. Again, same brand as the scalp exfoliating shampoo. And I also really like this exact same thing, but in the cream version. I think that both do a really good job. They've improved the nozzle on this a lot. So it actually has changed shape. I feel like it really got all of the product out. Like when I shake this, I don't hear anything rattling around or I don't know. They just did a really good job improving the bottle to make sure that you get every last drop out. I can read you a little bit about this. It says Rosarco Milk is an ultra lightweight leave-in conditioning spray. It contains a nourishing blend of rosehip, argon, and coconut oils. Rosarco, that's like the beginning of rosehip, argon, and coconut, and vitamin E to combat dryness, restore shine, heat protect, and strengthen hair from root to tip. So it kind of does everything that you need it to do. You have to be careful and read sprays like this though because every conditioning spray is not a heat protectant. Don't think that it is going into it. Be sure that you actually read the bottles. The cream version has all of the same abilities. It has all of the same claims. It's just what format do you prefer? Now if you have thinner hair, I would totally recommend going with the spray because you can kind of control how much you're spraying on and how evenly it's distributed. With the cream, sometimes it's really easy to go from very little product to very heavy 
heavy handed really fast. If you have thicker hair, I think you can toggle between the two, but thinner hair, I would go with a spray. Another product that I've been liking is this Living Proof Style Lab TBD Multitasking Styler. Now I got this as an add-on from FabFitFun. This is exactly what it says. It is a multitasker, but it can also come off a little heavier on my hair than the typical creams from Briogeo or other brands that I've tried. It says that this product gives you the freedom to wear your hair in different ways from a polished blowout to deconstructed second day hair or simply to tame and manage. So ways that I've used this is just like a cream to put in my hair before I blow dry, but it does tend to weigh it down just a little bit. You have to use a little less product than you think you should when you use this. But another cool thing is that my hair can get frizzy and I live in kind of a hot or humid climate. And so then I can get those flyaways throughout the day. And I used to do this when I was little, I was given this oil and I would put it in my hair and just lightly try to basically touch the flyaways and get them to like stick to my other hair without it being greasy. You don't like rub it on your hair. And this works the same way. You just get a little on your hands and you just kind of lightly go like this to get the flyaways to lay down and it does a really good job. So if you live in kind of a humid climate, I think that this could be a good multitasking styling cream for you because it can also be your normal heat protectant as well as like using it for those flyaways later in the day, which is really nice. So once I wake up the next morning and I go to style my hair, I'm always using some type of texture spray with my styling tools. Now I use this in a bunch of different ways. Sometimes I'll take the texture spray and spray it on the different pieces as I'm curling it. Sometimes I'll wait to the very end just to like zhuzh it up. Sometimes I'll come back later in the day and do the same thing. Just use it to give added volume. And sadly I've had this in my closet like two or three times because this stuff is stupid expensive. This is the only one that I have because I'm trying to work through this right now before I purchase another. So I wanted to give a mention to it because it is good. It smells really good. It's very effective. As I've mentioned before, it's the non nozzles on these different texture sprays that really make all the difference. Are they actually, you know, blowing hard enough, distributing product evenly to actually lift, volumize, and hold your hair? That's what a good texture spray does for you. So this is the Orbe Dry Texturizing Spray. I also really, really like the Bumble and Bumble Dry Spun Finish. That one is so good. It's not that much cheaper than this. I think this retails for $48 and that is like in the 30-ish dollar range. But then I also like the Amika Texture Spray. The only one that I've tried recently that I didn't really like is the Way, like O-U-I or O, I don't know how to spell it, the Way Texture Spray. That has been my least favorite so far. And then to finally set my style, you go in with a hairspray. Now I'm somebody that does not like firm hold hairsprays. I hate that. I want my hair to look pretty natural. If the curl falls out a little bit, so be it. I don't want it to look like I have crunchy hair that's going to stay that way for the next four days. I want to be able to run my fingers through it, so I always reach for some sort of light hold hairspray. This Living Proof Flex hairspray sets, shapes, and finishes, and I agree. This does a pretty good job. I've repurchased this two or three different times, typically through the FabFitFun add-ons again, because it's usually pretty discounted, and that's where I got this one for like nine bucks. And this also has a heat protection feature to it, which I really like. So if you're somebody who uses hairspray on your hair in the way that I kind of like to use texture spray before you curl a specific piece or straighten a specific piece, it does have that heat protection quality, which is really cool. But speaking of Kristen S in the shampoo and conditioner section that we already talked about, they make a really, really great hairspray that I think is almost better than this and is about half the price. It has a little bit firmer hold, but it's still classified as a light hold hairspray. And I think that it really does a good job of holding my style a little bit better than the Living Proof, but both are on par. If you don't have Kristen S in your target, I'm not sure if it's nationwide or not, then you can reach for the Living Proof and you'll still have really good results. Now I'm going on and on about this being a light hold hairspray. This is actually classified as a medium hold hairspray, but I don't really think it's medium hold. So that's something to keep in mind. This definitely performs more like a light hold hairspray than a medium hold. So once I've worn my hair throughout the day and I come home and maybe I'm doing something later that night, I'll typically want to use some kind of dry shampoo just to absorb up any oils or maybe I slept on my hair and I want to wear it the next day. I'll always go in with a dry shampoo. My hair doesn't really do great without a dry shampoo for second and third day hair. So one that I really have liked and have repurchased, this is like my third travel size of this, is the Amika Perk Up Dry Shampoo. This smells really nice. They finally fixed the nozzles on these bottles. Like there was an actual issue to where I like couldn't get stuff out of my other one. And I think that this does a great job without leaving a super de duper white cast in your hair. I've also tried the Dry Bar Triple Sec Dry Shampoo. 
that stuff, I cannot get the white out of my hair. And I know I've said this a million times, but I just, I really don't like that stuff. And that is wildly popular for whatever reason. My absolute favorite hands down dry shampoo ever is the Living Proof dry shampoo. They say and they advertise that it actually does a little bit of cleaning of the hair. And I kind of totally believe it because it soaks up my oil so well. I can wear my hair three days without washing it, no problem. I usually don't go that long just because if I exercise, I sweat way too much to actually make dry shampoo work at all. So I typically end up having to shower, but every other day, totally. If you want a drugstore alternative dry shampoo and you don't want to pay the big bucks for like Amica or Living Proof, the Batiste dry shampoos are really good. I prefer them over the Not Your Mother's brand. I just don't like the scents that the Not Your Mother's brand offers and I think that Batiste has done a really good job of designing some with different hair colors, different scents to please a bunch of people. And I've also recently really liked the Dove dry shampoos, but if you don't like fragrance or too much fragrance that you can smell throughout the day, avoid Dove at all costs. Not that you have to repurchase hairbrushes a whole lot, but there are two that I want to talk about that I use all the time. This is a Tangle Teaser, and this was the first kind of like wet hairbrush that I ever purchased. I liked it because it was super compact, completely plastic, so that when you travel with it, you don't run the risk of like little, you know, coverings coming off the end of your bristles or it getting squished down or messed up in any way. And so this traveled with me for probably two to three years. And then so many people, after I talked about this on my channel, mentioned the wet brush and I finally dove in and purchased it and I definitely see why. I have had significantly decreased flyaways since I've started using this. This did a good job like my hair used to be flyaway central but this does an even better job so if you don't have either and you're looking for a product like that to just kind of take care of your super vulnerable wet hair then I would go with the wet brush. I think this cost me $9.99 from Target. It stayed in really good shape. It's also pretty small and thin and durable and I've traveled with this one no problem too. It has fully plastic bristles, so kind of the same idea as this, just not like an ergonomic handle. It's just like your typical standard hairbrush. So hopefully this was helpful and that you enjoyed this style of video. I still have one more kind of in this series that's my most repurchased makeup, so stay tuned for that. But if you like this video, then like it. Stick around, subscribe, join the community, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.